Hi everyone, my name is Stefan Burns, back to you with another space weather update because our sun is super active right now. We just had a mini geomagnetic shakeup yesterday and it looks like there's an even larger geomagnetic storm on its way to our planet arriving around April 18th. We'll look at that data, but first we will start with our sun, our 304 angstrom view. We see a couple different plasma filaments on the sun and you'll notice that we get this plasma filament to destabilize followed by this one. And what's interesting about that is that this is the same location that the other two plasma filaments destabilized and launched from. So this is right on our earth center and direct line. So it remains to be seen whether these two plasma filaments are going to interact with the earth in any way, whether this will influence the solar wind in a significant way in terms of a geomagnetic storm on our planet. We'll look at the chronograph data, but they did snip out this exact time section of these two plasma filament launches. So a little bit of an unknown there, but regardless, it was the plasma filaments that were up here a few days ago that also launched right from this same degree point, you could say. And so it's interesting that there seems to be an element of magnetic instability at that location of the solar, you know, kind of celestial grid, you could say. And we have these really large sunspot groups, both in the northern and in the southern hemisphere, rotating into that zone very, very soon. We've already seen flares launch from both of them. We had a whole bunch of M-class flares that were launched that is culminating uh, and kind of combining into this plasma wave that is expected to arrive on the 18th and trigger this G1 geomagnetic storm. So nothing terribly strong according to the forecast that we are right now in a period of time around the equinoxes where energy injection into Earth's magnetosphere and plasma sphere is easier. So geomagnetic storms are amplified and our radiation belts are charged. We'll look at that data as well. So just in general, a comprehensive space weather and solar update for you. And the big uh, unknown right now are kind of these plasma filaments. We got both of them launching. You can see that this one seems to kind of go south. This one seems to kind of go north. So they may bypass the Earth by going this direction where Earth is right now in that center zone. It always is, it's on that ecliptic. So, but if there is any kind of forward component to them, they could meet up together in interplanetary space and shake up the solar wind, amplified strength, changes magnetic characteristics, and we could potentially see another small geomagnetic shakeup or even geomagnetic storm as a result of these two plasma filaments that happen back to back. But right now, really after that, now it's time to look at these sunspot groups here. Here is our solar intensity gram for today, April 17th, taken at 1530 UTC. And you see sunspots all across the surface of the sun, showing a whole bunch of magnetic flux on the earth facing side of the sun. And the two main sunspots to look at are this group here and this group here. This is the same sunspot group that launched that coronal mass ejection that triggered that most powerful geomagnetic storm in seven years. It survived its solar rotation. It's back for more. And this guy has been flaring, but really it's this sunspot group here that's been flaring more active recently, stronger flares, but really both of them are worth watching. And there's also a coronal hole right in this zone here. We'll look at the magnetogram to really see that coronal hole and some of this magnetic flux. But there's other sunspots too we have this one right here in the strike zone, this one pretty close to the strike zone, rotating away. Quite a large sunspot core there that's now on the limb, but these sunspots here have been pretty quiet actually. Most of the solar kind of flux and activity is concentrated in these sunspots here. And of course we had those plasma filaments that destabilize. That's not exactly sunspot activity, that's a different characteristic at play. But Lots of solar activity, another sunspot group here rotating into view soon. This one actually looks pretty intense. Two big cores there, uh, some more cores above it, some more to the side. We'll get a better look at that in the days ahead. But this will take about maybe three days to get to the center line, two to three days. It's gonna be in the strike zone for the next two to four days. So really coming up on this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, we have some really big 
flare players, some really large sunspots have been really active exactly in that strike zone. So that's why I wanted to highlight this right away. And before we get to our updated solar wind model, here is our magnetogram for the sun. And also it shows the coronal hole that is active. And this is a feature that has been in play for a while now. We've had this big zone of magnetic flux with a coronal hole preceding it. And we've had these kind of filaments that have been building in front of that. So there's this kind of this, this sequence of solar activity that the earth has been uh, receiving continuously now for about a month or more. So we have those two plasma filaments that launched. We'll have this coronal hole uh, go past that earth center line. These coronal holes are areas of open magnetic field flux. So the magnetic field lines emit from them and they emit high speed streams of ions. Now ions are charged particles, so they carry more powerful magnetic fields when they're traveling faster. Uh, and the ion composition also matters too. So we get this high speed stream pretty close to the equator that's going to sweep by the earth. And then we get these big sunspot groups that if they flare could also load into interplanetary space a lot of energy. They could trigger very large coronal mass ejections, which could lead to very powerful geomagnetic storms. And right now we are in that Russell McFerrin regime. I've talked about that before. So we have a whole bunch of activity coming up over the next two to four days based on the location of these guys right here. And then in addition to that Jupiter Uranus planetary alignment, which is quite significant, only happens once every 14 years, we also have a full moon coming up on the 22nd, 23rd. So the moon will enter into Earth's magnetotail around the 19th of April. And then at that full moon position, where she's in opposition to the sun, she's reflecting a lot of sunlight and all the different wavelengths of light back into Earth, causing the overall energy amplification of the Earth geophysical energy system. So a lot of factors at play, definitely an energy culmination, a really large energy culmination coming up for April 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd, and then with a little bit of wiggle room uh, on each side. We're already in this regime. We just had a mini geomagnetic storm and we have another one coming up. So now let's look at that data. Here we have our HB60 index, a measure of geomagnetic activity, just like the KP index, but on a 60 minute time scale instead of a three hour uh, rating. So this is a measure of overall swings in strength of Earth's magnetic field as measured at the surface. And if I step off here, you'll see that we had pretty normal geomagnetic conditions, nothing too crazy. And then we did get this minor geomagnetic storm. So quite a lot of yellow values here. Uh, some of our HB60 indices even went above five. We had a high there of 5.667 from 22 to 2300 UTC on the 16th. And so this is kind of a warm up geomagnetic storm. It's not that strong. I'm not sure if it even hits the G1 classification, but you can see the difference here in geomagnetic activity. So there is a change that the earth just went underwent. And this is kind of a warm up for what we have coming because the space weather model that we have for this upcoming plasma wave impact looks to be quite a bit more significant than the space weather model that was made for this one. And this one came in late. It was estimated to arrive uh, on a certain date, then about 24 hours later, it finally arrived, but it did arrive. And so this new space weather model shows an even larger spike in the plasma density. Let's look at that now. Here is our latest space weather model by NOAA that was run on the 15th of April at 1900 UTC in CME mode. There is our combined plasma wave that's sweeping by the earth. And this is occurring right here around the 18th of April UTC time, though there could be some time difference there. These models are not 100% accurate. They do not 100% reflect what reality will be. They are just based on the data and observations that we have available to us. So we see Earth there in green. Here is our sun. Let's look at these coronal mass ejections as they launch. You'll see that there are multiple. This is from a whole bunch of flaring that occurred. You see that they combine and then a good portion of that and quite a lot of uh, density to it sweeps by the earth. So this goes up to about 40 or so 
on the plasma density according to this model. And if we look at the velocity, we also see the velocity go up. So it's both a plasma density bump and a velocity increase, which gives this potential chronal mass ejection impact even more strength. So we have this coming up around the 18th UTC time. So if you're in like, let's say North America, this could be uh, late for the 17th of April. And if you're more like in Asia, then this could be early morning hours of the 18th. If you're in Europe, then you're basically right on schedule and uh, schedule. And so we, he we have this positive density bump, but don't be surprised if this gets pushed back. That last one got pushed back quite a bit too. And these flares uh, that destabilize the corona and these chronal mass ejections, uh, they, they weren't that strong. They, these were not X-class flares or anything. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is a, a bit delayed, but we'll see, time will tell. Here is our x-ray flux from April 4th to today, April 17th. And this really shows the big change that the sun has undergone recently. You see here that our overall x-ray flux across these different bands was at this minimum. And then it's really charged up since kind of on a continuous increase. So this is a sequence of flares. There's a whole bunch of M-class flares that are stacked in here that is contributing to this plasma wave, this chronal mass ejection that was launched towards the Earth that could trigger this storm on the 18th. We see that there has been a bit of a drop in activity since then, but we're still getting some flares just barely touching the M-class zone or the high C-class zone. And as the sunspots rotate into that Earth strike zone, if they launch, even a sizable M-class flare, this could be significant for energetic conditions on our planet. Of course, they could do something larger. They could launch into the X-class flare territory. It's highly possible that Southern Sunspot that's very wide and big already did that multiple times. So it's definitely not something to discount. That's why I'm making this space weather update video for you. Uh, let's just look at the state of our radiation belts now to get a sense of how much energy is available on our planet to cause a ion precipitation event which amplifies the energies of a geomagnetic storm. Here is our radiation belt model from April 10th to today and we see that the radiation belts have been fairly charged. Here is our flux power legend there and you see that during this mini geomagnetic storm that we had, they will drop and go dark blue, showing a large ion precipitation event, but they rebounded. So the energy flux of the radiation belts has actually gone up quite a bit since that geomagnetic storm. It's still a little bit lower than it was in the period prior. But if you watch this one more time, you'll see that really powerful ion precipitation event from that weak geomagnetic storm. But then see how the color rebounds pretty quick? And now the model resets. So it's actually more energy in the radiation belts at this moment in time than you may think because of that geomagnetic storm. So this new plasma wave that's coming in, if that does arrive and if it triggers any sort of geomagnetic shakeup, which it almost certainly will because of the Russell McFerrin effect, then we will have energy in our radiation belts that's ready to dump right back down into the ionosphere and into the upper atmosphere. And this creates a stronger ionosphere, which amplifies and increases the energy of weather systems. It can help lead to the generation of weather systems. You have to think of all this as electromagnetic potentials. And so when you have the potentials changing and they amplify, this changes the, the fields at play. And it allows for new energy to flow in places that it may not have otherwise. So there's a lot happening on our planet. One mind can't comprehend it all, but the best we can do is to look at all the different factors, know and learn some of the basics, and then do our best to interpret in between and just be ready for this. So if you like to learn how to be ready for these geomagnetic storms health-wise, if you're someone that's bioelectrically sensitive, or you just wanna be a healthier person, and to strengthen your own internal bioelectric system, reduce inflammation, all these things, then I have a guide available here for you. It's a one hour and 11 minute guide on how to improve your health. And really it's targeted towards improving your bioelectric strength and amidst these high energy flux events, which we have coming up with this grand culmination. So I hope you find this video useful. It'll also be in the video description. With that, thanks so much for watching. I wish you all well and have a great day.